Hi friends, I'm Pastor Joel Gartner, the National Director of Jesus Cares Ministries. We're excited to give you yet another resource for our friends with special needs to learn more about their Savior Jesus and grow in their faith. We're happy to provide you these videos of the live stream of our simplified worship service, Worship for the Cross. We pray that you would find them beneficial. In case you don't know, Jesus Cares Ministries is one of the ministries of the Lutheran Home Association. You can learn more about Jesus Cares Ministries by going to our website, tlha.org, and clicking on the Jesus Cares Ministries tab, or you can visit our Jesus Cares Ministries Facebook. Hello and welcome to Worship at the Cross. My name is Michael Hennig. I serve as staff minister for St. Mark Ministries in Green Bay and De Pere, Wisconsin. Welcome to Worship at the Cross and welcome to those of you watching and being part of the service here in person. And if you're watching online for the very first time, I'm really glad you're here. And if you're joining us again because you've been with us the last few months, it's good to have you back. This is a, a service where you can participate at home and you can be involved and participate here. Not just while we sing, but as we hear God's word and we get to talk about that. And I hope you have an opportunity with family at home or friends and you're able to do that online with us. Remember that during the service while we sing our songs, if you have a shaker like this or maybe just a water bottle with some beads or beans in it, uh, you can use that as a shaker. And once we're done with those songs, then we'll just rest those instruments so that we can have a conversation, hear God's word, and, and talk to him. I'd encourage those of you watching online to think about your prayer requests. You can even give them now in the chat line. And after a while, after the message, we'll sing a song, and then we'll take those prayer requests. And we'll take those to God, and I'll do that for you. Remember that a prayer request can be something for yourself. It can be something for someone else. But prayer is also giving praise to God and giving him thanks for what he's done. So if you come up with a prayer request, that's certainly fine. We can ask God for something. But think about ways that we can also give thanks to God. Where has he blessed you in your life? And how do you want to give thanks for what God has done for you? And we can do those as well. Grab your instruments. I'd like to introduce to you, welcome back to my friend and co-worker, staff minister, Phil Boilo. He's going to start us out in a new song, and I look forward to singing this with you. I'm really excited to be here with you all. And to start, actually, before I start the song, I'd like to do a little experiment with you. Would you close your eyes for a second? Close your eyes and tell me what you see. What do you see? Okay, probably you see darkness or you see nothing, right? You can open your eyes now. Uh, well, sometimes we have a habit of going ahead and keeping our eyes closed in life. We need to keep our eyes open to be able to see. Sometimes instead of keeping our eyes closed, we need to also be able to open our heart. And God wants us not to have our eyes closed to him. He wants our eyes and our heart to be open to him. And that's so important. And that's what this song is about. It's called Open the Eyes of My Heart so that we can see Jesus a little bit better. We can understand him a little bit better. We can love him better. And he can bless us as well. So sing with me as you feel comfortable. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Let's try that one more time. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you, I lifted up. 
shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Bill, thank you. Thank you for bringing us into this worship service and praise and song. If you're at home or if you're sitting here with us today, go ahead and just, we're going to rest our, our rhythm instruments in the ground. We're going to begin our service, and you see at home and you see here on the screen, you have a circle, and inside that circle are three things that we really focus on in that service and in this service. And first of all, we have the cross, and then we have the candle, and we have a bell. And so we worship at the cross because on the cross is where Jesus died for you and I. And those of you watching at home, you may have a cross hanging up at home. Maybe you can look at that cross or you can look at the one on, on your computer or TV screen. And we worship at the cross because that's where Jesus died for our sins. We light a candle to remind us that Jesus is always with us. Seth, you want to light the candle with us tonight? Come on up here. Okay. Nice work, Seth. We light the candle to remind us Jesus is always with us. And even though we're going to put that candle out at the end of the service, thank you, Seth, very much. You did a great job. Even though that candle goes out at the end of the service, Jesus is still with us and he's still with you at home. We ring the bell, and I have a new person here tonight, so I'm going to give her the honors of the bell. We ring a bell to remind us this is the time that we get to listen to God's word. We get to sing to him as we just did in song, and we have another song in a little bit. We also get to pray to him together. The candle, the cross, and the bell. We worship God. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together here and at home. Let's say Amen. Amen. What I'd like you to know, and as you see that picture of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, those of you sitting here tonight, maybe if you're watching at home, you look out right now and you can see those clouds. You see that ray of sunshine coming through the window? Pretty cool, isn't it? God the Father, the best image we can have of, of God the Father. But we've seen the second person of God, Jesus, in person. And we look, he was not, we haven't seen him today because he lived 2,000 years ago, but he was present on this earth and now he's back in heaven preparing a home for you and I. And that Holy Spirit in the form of a dove working faith 
in our hearts here and for those of you at home. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let's have a prayer together. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, come and be with us today. Bless our worship. Give us understanding as we listen to your word. Give us joy as we sing praises to you and give us peace as we bring our prayers to you in a little bit. We ask this in Jesus' name and together here and at home, let's say amen together. Amen. I'd invite you daily, not just while you're in church, but whether you're in church or you're watching at home, to confess your sins to God. And the reason we confess our sins, even though God knows everything about us, don't be afraid of that, but God knows our sin, and he wants us to con confess that sin. And, and you see on the screen a person whose hands are behind a jail cell. And when a person is in jail, is that completely done, or can they ask God for forgiveness? They can ask God for forgiveness, absolutely. Now, it doesn't mean that their jail sentence is necessarily over with, but God wants people in jail to repent of their sin and have forgiveness. Absolutely. Thank you. Now, the next picture you see are two boys fighting. They're fighting over a remote control. That doesn't seem that bad. What did you do today that maybe you're like, it's not that bad, it's not that bad. It was just a little argument, just trying to take something. Maybe you're watching at home and you're going, I didn't, I, I'm not in jail, I didn't do something that wrong. Do we still need to ask God for forgiveness? We do, we do. Take turns and share. Yeah, that's hard to do. That's hard to tell somebody. Yeah, ask for forgiveness from a person you know well. Because sometimes if we keep that anger against somebody, that hurts us more than if we just would forgive them. Right? Let's talk to God today. And join us at home if you're watching, where we get to talk to God and ask him for forgiveness. Dear children of God, God's holy. God's, he doesn't sin. God's holy. He doesn't want us to sin. But we are sinners and we do what God tells us not to do. We also fail to do the things that God tells us to do. So let's tell God that we have sinned by saying just those words, God, I have sinned. Say that with me. God, I have sinned. Let's tell God that we are sorry with just those words, God, I am sorry. Say that with me. God, I'm sorry. Here's the best part. Jesus died on the cross instead of you and I. And Jesus' death paid for your sins. So today you can be certain these words are true when you say, Jesus died for me. Say that with me. Jesus died for me. Through faith in Jesus, God has forgiven all your sins. He's opened heaven for you. He's preparing a place for you. Heaven is yours because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. Through faith in Jesus, God has forgiven your sins, and we get to tell that good news to other people. God forgives me. Say that with me. God forgives me. That man on his knees, that girl on his knees, whoever that is, he puts his hands up. Dennis, thank you. Yeah, they jump up. They're thankful. They're excited. A gift has been brought to their home. A gift has been brought to your home, a free gift of forgiveness. And so with any gift, we say thank you. We say, thank you, God, for taking away my sins. Say that with me. Thank you, God, for taking away my sins. Let's, let's have a prayer and give thanks to God for that. It's like a football game. You're right, Seth. It's like a football game. People jump up because of a touchdown, and we are jumping and putting our hands up, thanking God for his forgiveness. Thank you for that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Now we know that we have forgiveness for all of our sins. Now we know that we are your people, and now we know that we will live with you in heaven one day. Together, 
Let's all say amen. Amen. I invite you, if you're here today, maybe use a phone or a, a Bible app. If you're watching at home, you can maybe get a Bible ready. And we're going to go into God's Word. And you see that circle and a picture of a Bible. And that's the blessing of having the service as we get to talk about what's in the Bible and how God's Word is for our life. And before I show you a few pictures on the screen, I brought a few things with you that are going to help us get into God's Word. And if you're watching online or if you're watching here, tell me, just kind of, you can answer at home too if you're watching, uh, share it with a parent or someone. Uh, this would be a glass case. So I put my glasses in here. Why do I put my glasses in here? To protect them, to keep them safe. Very good answer. So that's exactly what it does because if I take my glasses off, put them on the table, chances are they might, yep, yep. And if I put them in here, they're nice and safe. They're protected. They might get wet, but not as bad as if they were just out in the open. Yeah, very good answers. They're protection. They're keeping it safe. Uh, what do these do? Sound proof. What was that? I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah, this, this protects. Sure. Yeah, a lot of different places. You might use these using equipment or target practice uh, or just having some quiet time. And some of you watching at home, I know you use these for just that reason because it helps drown out or cancel all the sound. So it protects your ears. Yeah, Dennis. Or sometimes if you have loud music. If someone has loud music, it's too loud for you. You can put this on and it doesn't hurt or damage your ears. Yeah. What would, um, what would this do? Yeah, a welding glove or maybe just putting a, a, a log of fire, a log of wood into a fire, a fire pit or a campfire, a fireplace. So this will do what? Yeah, it's going to keep the heat and the fire from burning my hand. So this is my guard. This is my protection to keep my hand safe. Well, one more here, and then I'm going to show you a couple pictures. What is this? So this is a handsaw. You would use this to cut boards or cut a long sheet of plywood. And what is this right here? Yeah. This shield here is going to keep me from cutting my fingers. It's a safety protection. Yeah, can you see that at home? How it is a, a guard on the saw, and it'll keep me, it will help protect me from cutting my fingers. We've got to try it, right? No. Okay. Yeah, you always want to be careful and wear the ear protection, eye protection, and then that saw and you want to use it around an adult, especially if you're a kid watching at home, make sure you have an adult showing you how to do that. So a lot of things that help guard you. Look at the picture on the, on the screen. What is, that going to, what is that going to show you? Go ahead, Aubrey, if you could go to the next one. There is a, a picture of something inside. Airbags, yeah. What do, what do airbags do, Seth? Do you know? What does an airbag do in the steering wheel? When would an airbag come out? Yeah. Okay. So if you would get into a car accident, you would bump into something or somebody would bump into you, that steering wheel one's going to come out. This Airbags pop out so fast, like just split split second your car is done unfortunately you're right you're right uh but at least what did those what did those airbags on the side like this car has them on the sides on the windows um yeah 
you're protected from a lot of different things. You could have gotten worse. It could have been worse and hurt more. Exactly. Yeah. What about the next one? What is that? Okay. And that's not just any doorknob, Dennis. That's a lock and key doorknob. So a, a doorknob certainly helps you get through a door. And, and we'll start with that one. The door, if you're watching at home, you can just look at a door. You're probably standing next to a door. A door separates you from a, from a room. But a door with a key is going to protect you from what? From the outside. And so you can close your door and you can lock it and just go to bed at night feeling more protected because your door is locked. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six different things. Can you think of anything else in your life? Can you think of anything, if you're watching it at home, that protects you? A helmet. Putting on a bike helmet, if you're riding your bike, a motorcycle, seat belts. Seat belts keep you safe in your car. Those are some people don't wear their seat belt. I don't understand why, but they click it or ticket. That's right. So I would encourage you at, at home or here to use the things that God has given people the ability to protect themselves. I want to share what God's word tells us tonight, and it's from the book of Ephesians. So if you're watching at home, you can turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And Ephesians chapter 6 talks about some things that protect you and I. Let me share what God's Word says. It's titled, God's Armor for Believers. Finally, let the Lord make you strong. Depend on his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor, and then you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. So we're told the devil is going to try to come find you. He doesn't want you to know Jesus more. And so we put on the armor that God has given us. What would be some of God's armor? Any thoughts on that? What would... To share the truth and how do you know the truth and you're doing it right now dennis listening to the word. you are here listening to the word are you putting on the armor right now yes. you are you are in a worship setting putting on the armor so you are equipped as you go out into dennis's world you believe god has the power so instead of walking around in life going, I can do it, I can do it on my own, or when you realize you can't, going, I'm lost, you say, I can do it because of God's power. Great answer. Great answer. What do you think at home? What are the ways that you at home put on the full armor of God? And you're doing that right now by, by watching your worship service right now when you go to your own Jesus Cares worship service, when you pray for other people, which we'll do here in a couple minutes, and when you read God's word or have someone read God's word to you, we put on that armor. And my prayer for all of you here today and those of you watching at home is that you remember that. Put on the full armor of God so that you are protected from what the devil wants to do to you and the ways he tries to tell you that you're just not good enough, you're not strong enough, and a lot of different things. That's my prayer for you. Amen. I would encourage you, if you are here tonight or if you're watching at home, uh, you can certainly give an offering. I would encourage you to give the way God has blessed you if you're watching at home and not sure how to do that, you can see a number of uh, different ways on your screen. You can support your local Jesus Cares ministry, your local church that you go to. Some of them have that online. Uh, but if you'd like and are blessed 
in more ways, uh, and God has given you the ability to support the National Jesus Cares Ministry, you see the link and the website to do that at home. My friend Phil is back, and he's going to take us through another song, and I look forward to having time to pray for you watching online and those of you here today. The time we have together is called Worship at the Cross. I'm going to play a song that's called Here I Am to Worship. And that's what we've been doing through our conversation, through Mike's message. We're going to sing Here I Am to Worship. step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here I am to worship here
thank you, Phil, for again closing our service in song and praise and talking to God in song. What a wonderful blessing. If you're watching at home, I hope you enjoyed singing some of these new songs. Maybe you were familiar with them, and, and maybe they were new to you, and I hope that you saw this as an opportunity to praise God in song and, and learn a new song. If you have a favorite song that you'd like to see at a future service, uh, go ahead. You can add those in the chat line as well and share with us maybe some of the music you'd like to see and hear at the service. I'd love to pray to God today for you. And I have a couple people online. I will certainly share those requests. And even after the service is finished, if you see and think of something, you can certainly do that throughout the week as well. I want to take the uh, people who are sitting here tonight and see what it is that you want me to talk to God about, and then I'll share some of the requests that those of you online were sharing. Anybody here? Something to talk to God about that you want? Yes, go ahead, Seth. It was your first day back at work, and my guess, Seth, is maybe someone watching online experienced the same thing today. It was their first day back at work, so I'm going to give thanks to God for for you and maybe others watching at home who maybe went back this week to work for the first time. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for, for Seth who went back to work today and he was able to go back and see friends, co-workers, and, and use the abilities you've given him to serve and, and make some money and to, uh, to hold his job. I thank you for that. And, and anyone watching online that maybe had the same opportunity, bless and keep those and keep them safe and healthy in your care, those who went back to work. Amen. It was like both of you there. I had spiro. I had a spiro, right. Yeah, that, that can spiro. Yes. Thank you, Seth. Dennis. I have two things. Yeah, absolutely. It's my birthday on today, so today is Sunday. Okay. Your girlfriend's birthday. And uh, my dad's back on my back from Illinois. He went to Illinois and he's back safe. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's Let's give thanks to God for those two things. Dear God, thank you for Dennis, his girlfriend he brought tonight to worship at the cross, and her birthday is on Sunday. So I pray that you give and bless her with a wonderful birthday and, and, and time together. Dennis's dad also went to Illinois. We prayed about that last time and asked for a safe trip, and you brought his dad back safe. Thank you for doing that, Lord, and for, for blessing his dad with that trip. In your name we pray. Amen. Kaylin. I have a family who's 91 and they're 91. A great grandma who's 91. Yeah. That's awesome. She's not, doing She's not doing good. Okay. 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 I'm, and it sounds like she had a pretty good life, and that's still sad for us and hard to understand. Sure. That's tough. That's tough when you can't see a loved one during this time. And my heart goes out to those of you watching at home if you're not able to see a loved one as well. That's, that's tough to do. Let's pray. Lord, thanks for, uh, we're going to celebrate 91 years soon for, for great grandma. And uh, I'm thankful that, Lord, for the many years she was able to experience, but at the same time, she's not doing the best. Um, I don't know what your plan is, Lord, so keep her and her family in your care and, and care for her if it be your will that she sees 91 and, and maybe more that's great but otherwise I pray that you are with the family right now especially when it's difficult we're not able to see people we're not able to see loved ones in a nursing home with everything going on and I pray for people watching online if, if they are not able to see a loved one uh, because of everything uh, give them some comfort through that in your name we pray Lord amen so online, I want to just share, and we'll pray for this, uh, Trent and Nick. They're both part of the, the Hartford Jesus Cares ministry, and they have a program there, and they both have birthdays this month. So happy birthday to Trent and Nick. That's awesome, and I will certainly thank God for, for, for both of you. Uh, Mariah is one of our faithful watchers as well, and she's watching uh, again at Hope Residence, and she'd like to pray for her friends at Hope Residence. Uh, also, the new Highland, High Island Creek residents, uh, she wants to pray for, for her friends there, and that may God continue to keep 
all of them safe. Mariah, that's my prayer for you and for all of your friends in both of those places that they are safe. And I'm thankful that you always are there to ask us for those prayers. And finally, Pat D. gives thanks to God that um, God has kept her and her Jesus Cares friends safe during this difficult time. So thank you, Pat, for that prayer request, and it's wonderful to give God thanks for those things. Let's close our service in that prayer. Lord, thank you for Trent and Nick, uh, part of the Hartford Jesus Cares program. I pray that you bless them during their birthdays and keep them in your care, and I'm thankful they're able to watch us here and worship you. Thank you for Mariah and her constant prayer requests for, for the friends and the residents in, in both of those homes that she knows people and, and loves people, and I, I'm thankful that she has that request monthly uh, to keep them safe and keep them in your care, as well as Pat D., who wants to say thank you, Lord, for keeping her safe and healthy. Watch over all of those people, Lord, and the many who are watching online. Keep them in your care. Keep them healthy, and if they're struggling with a sickness or health problems or, or something else, just not able to leave, give them peace and comfort during this difficult time. We know we can go to you anytime, Lord, in prayer. And I thank you for this opportunity and blessing to pray to you today. It's in your name that we pray, and we all together say amen. Amen. Let's close our worship at the cross service with the Lord's Prayer. If you're watching at home or if you're joining me today, maybe you've said this prayer many times, and it's easy to say it very fast. Or maybe you've never said it at all. And so we say it a little bit slower, and we focus on each part of that prayer. Join with me here and, and at home as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Together we say, Our Father in heaven. Join me. Our Father in heaven. God's in heaven. And we talked about that at the beginning of the service. Our Father in heaven. Together we say, Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We want God's name to be kept holy. His name is holy, and so we give him honor for that. The next part is your kingdom come. Together we say, your kingdom come. We want God's word to go to all people, all people to hear his word. The next part is your will be done on earth as in heaven. Say that with me. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. We say that together. Give us today our daily bread, not just bread, but food that we eat, clothes, shelter, all the things that sometimes we take for granted. We ask God, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Say that with me. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. That second part is sometimes difficult to do. We want forgiveness, but sometimes it's hard to forgive others. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We say that together. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power. We say that together. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Say that with me. And the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love that God has for all of you, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you until we get to see each other again next month. I pray God is always with you. He continues to be with you. We'll see you again online for our worship service on September 8th. I would encourage you to continue those prayer requests, as well as going back to the survey. Let us know if you're happy with watching this service once a month or if you'd like to maybe see a second one. We'd love to hear your feedback and what you think, and I look forward to worshiping with you again soon. Thanks for joining us at Worship at the Cross.
Thank you for watching this video of our Worship at the Cross service. You can support the ongoing work of Jesus Cares Ministries by going to tlha.org slash donate. Your gifts enable us to not only produce videos like this and share the gospel of Jesus with many more with special needs, it also allows us to continue to reach out to those with special needs all across the United States as well as in Malawi, Africa. Thank you again for joining us.